So what is the best way to teach jazz improvisation to beginners? It's got to be the blues scale, right? That's what everyone does. Well, not exactly. Not in the way that you might think, anyway. Today, let me tell you about an effective approach that I've used using key centers. A key center approach, like the one that I'm going to describe today, brings a lot of benefits, including helping your students to focus on basic, essential, fundamental skills while playing creatively, expressing themselves, building their confidence, and improvising in a way that kind of sounds like they're playing jazz right from the very beginning. Hi, I'm Dr. Saul Richardson from Jazz Workshop Australia, and welcome back to Teaching Jazz for another video about jazz education. Beginners should be playing in key centers, not chord changes. For beginners, key centers, not chord changes. Before I tell you the reason why, let me just define what I mean when I say key center playing. A really common example of playing in a key center is using the blues scale. For instance, in a 12-bar blues, there might be multiple chords, three, four, five, six different chords in the 12-bar blues progression, but if you use a single blues scale over the entire progression, that's playing in a key center. We figure out what key the blues is in, and we use that blues scale. I'm going to tweak that idea just a little bit and suggest not the regular blues scale, which is a, a minor pentatonic scale with a flattened fifth in it, essentially. Um, I'm going to be recommending today the major blues scale and the bebop minor scale. Another example of playing in a key center might be a 2-5-1 chord progression, let's say in the key of F G minor 7 chord, changing to a C7 chord, changing to F major 7 chord, three different chords, and yet one common key center. Tunes might be in more than one key center. For instance, the A section of Moton Swing is in the concert key of A flat major. And then the B section, the bridge, is in the key of C major. So a beginner student improvising over the A section wouldn't be looking at each chord individually, chord one, chord two, chord five, two, five, two, five, one. They're not going to be distracted by guide tones and things like that. They're just going to be focusing on the key center. As another example, here's Bernie's tune. The A section of Bernie's tune is in the key of D minor, and it changes to B flat major in the bridge. Okay, so that's what I mean when I say playing in a key center. Many tunes are in a single key center, such as a 12 bar blues, other tunes change key. They might be in two key centers, three key centers, and so on. Okay, so why play in key centers at all? Professional jazz players are playing guide tones, they're playing arpeggios, changing chords as they, as they play. Someone listening to a solo should be able to tell just by listening to what the soloist is playing and which notes they're emphasizing, which chord they're up to in the chord progression. That's how the professionals do it, so why waste time doing something else with beginners? Well, as I've said before in other videos, education is not the same thing as professional performance. You can't see the steps along the way to learning how to play jazz just by listening and looking at the finished product as it's played by professionals. Professionals perform on stage at gigs. Students work through a series of steps as they build their knowledge progressively and cumulatively over time to learn how to play jazz. The main benefit playing in a key center, apart from it being a relatively easy thing to do, there's not so much to worry about. We just learn a single scale and then do stuff with it. I would say one of the main benefits is that it frees the student's attention up to focus on things that are actually really important and fundamental and maybe even more important than details of chord progressions and harmony. For instance, sound, style, and rhythm, and time in general. Jazz musicians tend, when they improvise, when they play, to use rhythm in particular ways. It sounds, let's say, jazzy. Focusing on playing in a key center and not worrying about all of those other aspects of jazz theory that can be so overwhelming can help students focus on things like developing a great sound, which is just so important. That's so important. Let me tell you about the system that I use. Essentially, it's this. If a tune or a section of a tune is in a 
major key or a blues key, then improvise using a major blues scale. On the other hand, if a tune or a section of a tune is in a minor key, then use a minor scale. I would specifically recommend what I'm going to call the bebop minor scale. So let me tell you what those scales are. The major blues scale is constructed one, two, three, flat three, three, five, six, and then the octave. So it's a major pentatonic scale, importantly, with a flat third, a minor third in it. And that's the blues note and gives the blues sound. That's really important. And in fact, in that scale, it's the flat third that is the main one to emphasize and not the major third. Here's what the major blues scale sounds like. It's not just beginner students who improvise using a key center. Here's a recording, maybe surprisingly to some of you, of John Coltrane improvising in a key center. Here he is with the Johnny Hodges band. <laughs> The bebop minor scale is essentially a harmonic minor scale with a flat 7 in it. Or you could think of it as an aeolian scale, a natural minor scale, with the raised 7th added to it. So it has 8 different notes in the octave instead of 7. The bebop minor scale is the relative minor of the bebop major scale, which is a major scale with a sharp fifth added to it. So that's the bebop minor scale. It allows students to play with a kind of beautiful musical flow. How would we use this to help teach beginners? We might begin with tunes that can be played in just a single key center. Some examples of those might be blues, St. Thomas, Watermelon Man, Cantaloupe Island, On Broadway, Take the A-Train, Work Song, and Just Squeeze Me. Then there might be tunes that are in multiple key centers, two key centers or more. So once students have got a background improvising and figuring out the sound, style, and rhythm, focusing on just on a single key center, then you can move them onto tunes with multiple key centers or mixed key centers. Multiple key centers just means more than one. So for instance, I mentioned Moton Swing before. It has two key centers. They're both major though. A flat major and C major. Bernie's tune is an example of a tune with mixed key centers. The A section is in a minor key, D minor, and the bridge is in B flat major. A Night in Tunisia is an example of a tune that's in three key centers. The A section is in the key center of D minor, then the bridge is four bars of G minor, and then it's four bars of F major. So in that example, we'd be using the D bebop minor scale over the A section, and then the G bebop minor scale over the first four bars of the bridge, and then the F major blues scale over the second half of the bridge. Keeping track of relatively large chunks of time while students are improvising is an important skill and it's, an, it's a really important step towards the skills that they're going to need later on when they're playing chord changes and have to change every bar or even every half bar.
when we teach them to play in a single key center over a blues, they don't really need to keep track of the chord progression all the time. They can focus on things like interacting with the rhythm section, time, tone, the kinds of things that I've mentioned already. Then as we move through multiple key centers and mixed key centers, students have to start focusing on keeping track of time. Of course, we scaffold for them, we help them initially, we cue them, we tell them what key it's in, D minor, okay, here comes the bridge, two, three, four, change key, and now we're coming back to the A section. So we help them like that, but eventually they will learn, they'll get a sense of time, and they'll learn to keep more or less track of time, and also to hear what the rhythm section is playing. And then as the tunes change key more and more frequently, the length of time on each chord decreases. So they have to change more quickly. That begins to replicate the kinds of things that they're going to need to do when they're actually playing through chord changes, which is a more advanced skill and not something that beginners should be doing yet. And if they are playing through chord changes, then they're not a beginner. You can only use the Dorian scale or the, the Mixolydian in fairly specific situations, whereas the major blue scale can be used pretty much everywhere that's in a major key or a blues key. And the bebop minor scale likewise, almost universal application. By the time students get up to playing tunes where those two scales aren't really effective, they're probably not going to be beginners anymore. That's a more advanced thing. And don't be doing those tunes with beginners. Stick to things that are easy for them and accessible and give them the best chance to learn and develop the fundamental skills that they will need later on, and also to have fun and succeed. The key center approach that I've talked about in this video is a beginning, it's not the end. It's one of the steps along their long jazz journey. There can be a tendency sometimes among jazz musicians to look at things that jazz educators do and say, that's not how you play jazz. That's not jazz. It doesn't sound like jazz. It's not how you do it. Don't worry about that. A lot of exercises that students do don't sound the same as the finished product. That doesn't matter. Do you think that skills that sports people practice when they're doing drills are the same thing as playing a match? Of course they're not. We do exercises and drills to develop particular skills. So this is, this is just one of those things. And besides, if that's not reason enough, and I think it is, Playing in a key center is just the thing that professional players do in any case, certainly historically. So why not the minor blues scale? What about the normal blues scale, you ask? And that's a great question. Here's why. Two main reasons. First, the minor blues scale is full of notes that in the hands of beginners can sound devastatingly awful. Let's look at the most common situation where a beginner might be encouraged to use that scale. It's in a blues. It makes sense, right? 12 bar blues, we use the blues scale, of course perfectly logical. Here's the thing. The chord progression that beginners are most likely going to be playing over is the three chord, one, four, five, 12 bar blues. Okay, so they're playing over chord one. You've got the flat five of that. Awful. If it's overemphasized, used in the wrong way, dreadful sound. It's got the fourth, the fourth against a chord with a major third against chord one. Awful, particularly in the hands of a beginner. Okay, so we changed chord four. Is that going to solve any problems? No because you've got the fourth of that chord, not great. And you've got the flat ninth of that chord, ugh, no. Okay, what about chord five? Well, it's got the major seventh of chord five. The major seventh, are you kidding? And what notes do you think the beginners are going to gravitate to? The fourth, the flat five, of course, they're going to be playing those notes around the middle of the scale. Ugh. And the second reason for not using the minor blues scale and by the way, I'm not saying don't use the minor scale. I'm not saying it's just, this isn't one of those don't use this scale videos. You know, that's silly. Of course, use it. Um, that's part of jazz. But it's not 
part of jazz in the way that we often make out. It's not really a jazz thing. The minor blues scale, the blues scale is most often used as a sound that's added to something else. For instance, a player might be soloing through chord changes and then they'll play a blues lick. Here's an example of Charlie Parker doing that, for instance. <laughs> surprisingly rare to find a recording of a famous jazz player playing a whole solo where they use just the blues scale. See how many you can think of. It's not even a thing in the way that we often make out that it is. If you'd like to know more about how to teach using the major blues scale and using the bebop minor scale and other beginner approaches, that's all coming up soon in future videos. Right. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. It's great to have you here. This is really exciting to be able to share these ideas with you. If you've enjoyed this video or found any of it useful, please click the like button and maybe even subscribe. That would be great. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now and teach well.